Chris Nolan's sequel to the groundbreaking Batman Begins set a new standard for all superhero films to follow. Heath Ledger's performance also stands a chance at the first ever posthumous Oscar win. But can the home video release possibly deliver features to match up with a film of this caliber? So what are you proposing? It's simple. Kill the Batman. <laughs> Here's my card. Chris Nolan's Batman Begins was a reinvigoration of the Batman franchise. Uh, really allowed people to look at the character in a whole new light. And with The Dark Knight, Chris Nolan takes the, the whole mythology even farther, adding more characters, more danger, more story elements, um, just, and more darkness. What we have is uh, Batman is, is fighting his traditional nemesis, uh, the, uh, the Joker. Uh, with a couple other bad guys thrown in the mix, really ups the stakes for the whole franchise. Now there's a Batman. Oh, you want to play? Come on. I think it ups the stakes for superhero movies in general. You know, it raised the bar higher than people had expected. Like, there was a high expectations going in, this being Heath Ledger's pretty much final film, his swan song, if you will. So there was a lot of hype around it, but no one, I think, expected it to be as good as it actually was. Yeah, I think there was a lot of hype in there saying, you know, Heath Ledger this, Heath Ledger that. Uh, it's funny, the, 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 the emphasis was off Christian Bale completely. And actually, I, I've even felt within the performance that Christian Bale, I think, might have slacked off a little bit on his Batman delivery. The voice of, that he was using as Batman was a little too grumbly, a little too cartoonish. True, but then when you're going up against someone like Heath Ledger and the performance that he did give as the Joker, there's nothing you could do to take away any, any shine off that star. This town deserves a better class of criminal. And I'm gonna give it to him. Tell your men they work for me now. This is my city. They won't work for the free. Why don't we cut you up into little pieces and feed you to your pooches? Hmm? And then we'll see how loyal a hungry dog really is. It was creepy. Like, my favorite part of the movie it was early on when the Joker's sort of being introduced after he robs the bank and he walks into the, the typical, my favorite part, the villain meeting that they have. You know, and in walks this guy in paint in this crazy costume and he's just off the wall loony. And what does he do? He has chosen the trick on how to make a pencil disappear. And everyone in the theater was just like, oh, what the God happened? You know, like, do you remember? Like, it was just one of those moments that was just yeah. so awesome for that character. And it just set up the tone of what the Joker's gonna be like through this movie. Yeah, I think really, like, they made the Joker the star of this movie. He, he, he carried so much presence and intrigue, and, and you never knew what he was gonna do. You know, Bat you always sort of figure Batman's going to have a plan, and to see that the Joker really had a, a master plan and was almost ahead of him almost every step of the way was it was just so exciting to watch. The Joker had the, his one plan where he had rigged the the ferries going back and forth from from uh, like you know Gotham Harbor or wherever it was, and so he had a ferry full of bad guys, a ferry full of convicts, and a ferry full of just everyday yuppie commuters, and. Both had bombs on them, and both had to explode the other bomb, or else their own bomb would go off. Uh, and so you're sitting there watching and wondering, you know, who's going to go first? Uh, there's a lot of strife going on between people, and they're all shouting, and they're saying they're going to do it. And you're almost positive. Of course, the convicts are going to blow up the other ship. And no, you know, they, they're honorable, I guess, in their own kind of way, and so they, de they decide they're not going to do it. But you're, then you're positive that these yuppie jerks are going to just set the whole thing off. And, you know, didn't, Batman was not in this scene at all. Uh, Joker wasn't in the scene, but it was probably the most interesting scene for me in the movie because what you're doing is you're just watching and figuring out whether or not all the, all the work that Batman's done to save these people, well, is it really, are they really worth saving? It was one of those things I didn't expect to see in a movie of this caliber, having a pretty much a major turning point in the movie or a major conflict not involved with the two main villains or the main star. You know, like Batman wasn't swooping into the ferry and trying to talk the guys out of it, or, you know, or jump up in his bat hover boat or whatever he would use yeah. to get there. It was just a totally isolated, but involved at the same time scenario. You be wanting the bat putzer? In the middle of the day, Alfred? Not very subtle. The Lamborghini did. Much more subtle. As far as features on here, like, so what we're dealing with, like, dude, like we got a super, super movie, and it's coming out in, like, a few different formats, but, I mean, the Blu-ray is supposed to carry a lot of stuff. Uh, as far as features, it's got this live commentary deal where you can 
bring up parts of the movie and how they were made within the movie. Well, the one thing that people might not be aware of is that a lot of the movie, almost all the action was shot in the IMAX format. And if you got to see the movie in IMAX, it was astonishing because it blows you away. So it's really nice that they have th those scenes kept in their original framing on the uh, special edition. Yeah, so it's more of a four by three style, which is odd that the 70 millimeter format is actually boxier than the regular 35 mil. So it's also got some deleted scenes, feature commentary, a couple other things just to really sort of spice it up. You'll see, I'll show you. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I think it goes without saying, like, this is probably one of the biggest superhero movies ever made. It is one of the biggest superhero movies ever made. It's definitely going in the collection. I think the Blu-ray, it, it has a lot to offer, but if you're really not interested in the within the movie commentaries, it might not be the thing for you. Exactly. I'm going to get a copy of this when it comes out for sure. And really, it's a price point thing between Blu-ray and the two-disc DVD. If it's only an extra $5, I'm definitely going Blu-ray, but if they're going to double up the price, Probably not, but it is going to be a keeper for sure.